Hi, I'm George Pearson, and in this Photoshop Blur Background video, I'll be showing you how to take this image here and convert this into this image here. We can really focus in on the breakdancer here by taking the focus away from the background. Now, if you enjoy this video, make sure that you subscribe and also click that like button as well. And if you want to learn more about Photoshop, take a look at my training titles. You'll find the links in the description. Okay, let's get to it. To get this Photoshop blur background effect requires just a couple of layers. We have our front layer, let me just hide everything in the background here. We have our front layer, which is just the figure with a layer mask so we get that nice clean edge on that. And then we have the background, blurred background, and a bit of touch-up work on the figure as well, kind of clean the figure up a little bit. I'll show you how to do that. Above that, I just have a little cooling filter here just to help separate the foreground figure from the background. Since the foreground is now warm, background is cool, it just helps to separate those out. I could make it a little bit better, and I'll show you a little bit fancier trick on that as well, making the foreground warm and going to cool in the background. Okay, let's go ahead and see how this whole thing is done. I'll start off with just by deleting these three layers we don't need. Just trash those. There we go. So here's our original photo. Now, I always like to keep the background clean and not touch, just in case. That way I can always go back to it. So let's make two copies of the background layer. Drag down to our new layer button once, and then drag that down one more time. There we go. So I'll rename this one figure. And then this one will be Blur Background. There we go. And then we can hide the original, and that's our safety. Now, let's start off with making the mask for the figure. And to do that, I'll use the Pen tool. So I'll go up here to the Figure layer, and I'll hide that layer. There we are. And let's just zoom in real tight. That's pretty good. Now, to use the Pen tool, you click to make a point and then you click and drag to make a curve. So I'll be going around the whole outline just like this making my points and curves and then we'll convert that into a nice selection. I'm not going to do the whole thing here on this video. I have a different video on how to do or how to use the pen to make a selection. I'll put the link for that video in the description but I'll use this technique for the selection. You can use any technique that you like. This one just gives you a lot of ability because you can come back and you can modify the positions of your points by using the direct selection tool. Just click on a point. You can then move that point around. You can adjust the curve by adjusting your hand. So you can really fine tune this so that the path is exactly on the edge of the figure. Okay, so I'm going to pause the video at this point. I'll make that path and then I'll bring the video back up again once the path is finished. And again, if you want to see a whole video just on how to make paths and use them for a select. Okay, there's my nice path nicely cleaned up. Now once your path is made, come inside of the path, right click, and then, as I guess we can see this, we click down here, right click. There we go. Make selection right there. Click on that. Now I have mine set to a feather radius of one pixel. That just tends to soften down the edge just a little bit. It helps make it look a little bit more realistic. Either one or two. It depends upon the size of the image that you're working with. Smaller images, one if it's a larger image, try going up to two pixels possibly. Choose OK. There's our selection. Now something else I do as a safety is I will tend to save my selections just in case. Go up here to select, come down to save selection, give it a name and choose save. I most likely won't need that but just in case I've got to save anyway. That way you can bring your selection back up again even if you save and close a file and come back to it later that selection will still be saved with that. Okay so here's our figure, there's our selection that's our top figure layer. Then simply come down and click on the layer mask button. There's our layer mask right there. That's all done and there it is with background and without. Okay, layer mask is finished. Let's now blur the background out. 
I'm going to do a fast blur first. I want to show you a problem we have to take care of at this stage. Let's just do a fast blur. Click on our blur background. Let's go up here to filter and let's come down to blur and we'll choose Gaussian blur. And I'll give it just a just a bit of a blur, kind of like like that. That's pretty good. Just kind of a nice blurishness to it, not too blurred. Maybe I'll just type in 10 pixels here on that. So a pretty good blur. Choose OK. Now bring the figure back in again and you'll notice if I zoom in on the figure here you can see some of the blurred figure in behind our clean figure. So it gives you kind of a strange edge. Let's just move the picture around here so you can see a bit more of it. There you go. You can really see it along the shoe right here. It's kind of a weird edge on that. That's because the background figure is blurred and that blurs outside of our foreground figure so you get kind of a weird haloing effect around the figure. So you can see that elsewhere as well. Yeah, I really kind of see it right in here. It's kind of a weird halo thing happening on that. So we need to get rid of that. And the way you do that, let's hide our foreground figure, is that you have to actually come in and get rid of the edge. Clip the figure in a little ways so we don't have that edge. The edge will still blur, but the blur will be inside of where our new edge is going to be. So let's go ahead and do it that way. I'm going to just step backwards here. That gets rid of our blur effect on that. And then we're going to come in and using the clone stamp tool, I'm going to actually clone stamp in a ways on the figure and just hide a bit of the figure. If a little bit of the inside is showing, that doesn't matter. We need to get rid of that edge. So I'll start down here at the hand. We'll just zoom in. And the hand I can get rid of completely. So a clone stamp tool. There's our tool. To use the tool, hold the Alt key down and click. That's your clone from position. And then just clone right over your figure. Now on this one we want to be cloning just outside and then cloning inside. And you want to keep it fairly close and keep the clone looking fairly clean because you might see a little bit of that. So if you have lines, try to line your lines up like this. Just kind of move it along and, and pull the line in. Make it as clean as you can. Again, if you can leave the inside part, that doesn't really matter. Now when you get up to areas like this, it gets a bit trickier. Keep in mind though, that this is going to be blurred out. So if this isn't perfect, no one's going to notice. So that is a little bit of a help for us. I'll just start right over here. I'll grab this and just pull that straight up and I'll clone some of that in. And then let's just kind of clone some of this stuff here. Just a little, just a click and a tap and then a click, tap and a click. Remember it's going to be blurred out so it doesn't need to be a perfect clone. Just kind of reasonably okay. You can even, even fake in some stuff if you want to. Like that because you know no one's going to, going to see that. Okay, so that's brought in a little bit. Let's now move over here a little bit on this and just kind of lose that edge in there. There we go. A little tricky here. Again, all I really care about is the color. As long as the color looks good, that will blur in pretty well. And you only have to go up just a little ways like that for this to be effective. And then it's just a matter of going along the whole edge and taking out that edge clear around the whole figure. I'm just going to clone some of this over to here. There we go. And you'll see how nice and clean this will make it look once we actually do our official blur in the background. It'll look real nice. So it's a little bit of a time intensive process as you can see. It just kind of takes a little while to go around and do this whole cloning. But you get the idea now. You've seen what I'm doing. I'm just cloning in a little ways just to lose that edge. If I show our edge again, you can see how much we've cut out of there. Just take it back just a bit like that. Okay, I'm going to go ahead and pause the video again, and I'll finish this step, 
and just clean out that edge. I'll then bring this back up again once that edge is clean. There it is. I cut into the side clear on the figure. Again, this is the one that's on our blur background layer. Let me bring back in our foreground figure. There you go. You can see how it covers up all of that and we have our nice clean edges on our top layer and we just cut this in a little way so it's not up against those edges. That will solve the blur spill problem. Alright, now let's do a real nice blur on this. I can actually leave the foreground up. That's going to help us out. Make sure you're on the blur background and let's now go up here to filter and we'll come down to the blur gallery and this time we want to use the tilt shift blur right there. What this does is it gives you a blur that follows along this axis. Here's the center of the blur and the blur starts up. You can kind of see it in the background. There's a bit of a blur starting in here then it's blurry above and it's blurry below. So let's take this, move our center down so that the solid lines are kind of right in the middle. So I want to have my unblurred area right in here. And this is our blurred line. If I move this my cursor here over the line, you can see how it changes to a double arrow. And you see that pull that down, and that then pulls that blur down. And let's pull it down so that the blur is happening on the background figures, but not across here. And we can also take this and actually rotate this around a little bit by coming right down here, this little dot right there kind of pull on that one and you can then move the blur, set our blur so it's right across the base down here and we can increase our blur with this little control. Now if you want more control on your blur just go over here click on the blur tools right there and here's the tilt shift and here you can control your blur here as well. So whichever way you find easier. Now I want to have this blurred out enough so we're really not paying any attention to the background. We'll see if you're still seeing details, take it back just a bit further. There you go, just really blurring out so the details are kind of beginning to blur out. And the blur is lined up along the ground and it's in focus along here, which is what I want. I'll pull it out just a little bit. There we go. And it looks good. You can also kind of adjust your distortion in here, but I'll leave that at just at 0% at its default setting. And that looks good. Let's go ahead and close that down now. So there's the nice blurred background. If you're happy with the blur, just click on OK. And then it's going to think about it for a minute. And there we go. There's the blurred background. So far, so good. At this point, we can take a look and see if there's any problems around the hand, around in here. It looks like that's all fine. I'm happy with that. We don't see any blur bleed around the figure. That's what we're looking for. Now, to help separate out the figure from the background, it's kind of a little bit on the warm side, just a touch on the warm side. So if we put a cooling filter over the background, that will then cool the background down and make the figure pop out even more. Let's go ahead and do that. So let's go up to Layer and we're going to be doing New Adjustment Layer. Let's come down to a Photo Filter. I'm going to link this with the previous layer. There it is indented and then let's change this down to the Cooling Filter 82. It just cools the background down like that. So that really helps to separate out the foreground from the background. Now, if you want to go one step further on this and you want to have it warm down here and cool as it goes up, get cooler as it goes further away from the audience or from the, the subject up here into the audience, you can put a gradient on your layer mask over here. Anywhere where it is white, it's going to be showing. So I want white up here and where it's black it'll be hiding the filter so I want black down below so I want a gradient white to black. Let's go to our gradient tool and that's underneath here under the paint bucket there's the gradient tool. By default it's going to be black to white that's your foreground to background color. If you click on reverse on that it'll go white to black. I want the one right there, the first one, that's your linear gradient. And I'm going to start down further. I want, to, I want even more of this to be white so I'm going to start way down here someplace again click hold the shift key down and pull down like that there we go so what we have now is a gradient in the layer mask it's black at the bottom down here so that means that this is not showing our photo filter so it's warm down here and then it gets cooler as it goes into the background 
and that helps to separate the background out even more from the foreground figure. It's just a little bit warmer than the background and really separates that out. And for one final little adjustment on here, let's go back up to our figure layer and then layer and adjustment layer. Let's put in here one for levels and make sure that you use previous layer to create clipping mask. Just check that. Choose OK. And now we can fine tune the values of the figure in here. So let's just bring our darks up just, just a touch like that. Just kind of increase those. Bring the lights up just a touch. Just increase our contrast just a little bit. See how I'm kind of rocking this back and forth? That's so I can see what the effect is and exactly where I want to be having this effect. And I think that looks pretty good. Just kind of bringing the lights up a little bit, but our darks up just a touch. And together that increases the contrast of the image just a little bit. And then we can adjust the overall brightness of the image. There we go, just real small tweaks in there. And I'll just collapse that down. So there it is without, and there it is with. Just little tweaks because of that extra little something which really makes it to and helps it to stand out from the rest of the pictures because of that little last little bit of professionalism in there, this little adjustment layer. Okay, so there you go. That's how to do the Photoshop blur background effect. Thank you for watching my video. I hope you found it useful. If you like this video, click on the like button below to let others know. You can click the subscribe button so you don't miss any of my videos in the future. I'm frequently uploading new training videos. Don't forget to check out my website at howtogurus.com.